this will be available on Berkshire Art Center's YouTube channel. So I'll say this again, but we'll be able to send you a link and you can share with your friends, which is wonderful. Um, welcome. I'm Kristen Griffo, the Community Engagement Director for Berkshire Art Center. Um, we, and I'm here to introduce you to Inga Grab's Art and Talk from Earth to Art, My Journey Through Ceramics. Berkshire Art Center has been an art school for 30 years. You are in the historic Citizens Hall, which was built in 1870 and has been a uh, community center and an art school all of that time. Um, we are a nonprofit and we have location, a location here and in Pittsfield. We serve community members from children to adults all year round. We have after school programming. We're in 13 schools up and down Berkshire County after school, some, which some folks don't know about. We have a robust ceramic studio downstairs, which many of you know about, um, in, in addition to drawing and painting and 3D and you sort of name it, a uh, number of classes. We also offer discounts and scholarships regularly to almost anyone who qualifies or asks. So please spread the word about that as well. Um, our, our mission is to provide hands-on experience is in visual arts for, like I said, all means, all ages, to make art accessible for everyone. So um, just some housekeeping notes. The bathrooms are, most of you probably know, but they're um, back where you came and then down the stairs. Uh, please silence your cell phones. And um, we're going to do questions and comments at the end of Ingrid's talk. So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Ingrid Rob. Ingrid traditionally trained in fifth generation German pottery and has a long standing working relationship with clay. She established her own studio in West Berlin, Germany, followed by many years of clay work in Eugene, Oregon, and at the Harvard Ceramic Studio in Boston. Currently, she teaches here at Berkshire Art Center in Stockbridge. Her work has ranged from wheel thrown functional work to slab built ceramics. Coming full circle, she rediscovered her fascination for working with color designs on flat surfaces. Ingrid has shown her work in numerous places, including locally at Beckett Art Center, at Gallery on Main, and in October at Chesterwood, just up the road. So I'm happy to introduce Ingrid. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, thank you for coming. Um, I'm, uh, I'm to just a preface before I start with the slides. Uh, I'm going to show, uh, to use a timeline uh, to show how my work evolved. The presentation is organized uh, into four creative periods uh, as they were very much connected to the studios where I worked. Uh, for background, I was born actually in the Berkshires. Uh, but grew up in a small town in West Germany. Um, first, I'll tell how I started at age 17 doing pottery near my hometown in West Germany uh, and, uh, and then in West Berlin in the 70s. Uh, the second chapter uh, took place in Eugene, Oregon, where I had moved to in my early 20s. Uh, there, I worked at the ceramics department of the Maud Kearns Art Center and uh, sold my work at the Eugene Saturday Market. Um, also in Eugene, I met my husband, Jonathan, who's here. Um, and in the mid 80s, uh, we moved to Boston, got married, had two kids and uh, pursued our careers. Um, so during that time, uh, I took a long break from doing pottery uh, until 20 years ago uh, when I decided to return to clay and got involved with the Harvard Ceramics Studio in Cambridge. That would be the third part of the presentation. And then the fourth and current chapter began in 2020 when we moved here and I became involved with the Berkshire Art Center uh, some of you may know me from the studio, uh, by taking classes, um, or from the Berkshire Pottery Tour. Uh, and uh, I hope that you will find it interesting to hear how my ceramics evolved over time. All right. So I think now you can turn the light off if you. Great. Oh, okay, great. Um, so this is my hometown in, uh, in, in Germany. It's called Schlüchtern, it's tongue twister. Uh, 
and uh, it's it's a very sweet little town. Uh, at the time, it was in West Germany, near the border between East and West. Um, and uh, uh, that's where I grew up, went to school, uh, and um, uh, and what else can I say? Small hometown. Um, and uh, uh, as I went to high school, one day I was a bored teenager. Uh, and uh, me and my boyfriend uh, decided to take a take a ride uh, around to some of the villages, and uh, specifically to a little village in that's called Mayos. Another weird name. It's M A R J O S S, um, where uh, we were going to check out the very famous uh, um, uh, and cherished uh, pottery that was there. Uh, I did not grow up uh, as an artist or doing art at all. Um, uh, my family was fairly musical, but, um, but, but visual arts was not part of my repertoire. Uh, so I just thought I was going to maybe buy some nice little pots. Um, but uh, what happened, I'll tell so, you. So the potters there, um, they're fifth, they were fifth generation potters. Um, and uh, uh, and it really was a very sm tiny little space. Um, and uh, the my first impression was uh, seeing this potter um, called Ludwig Rupert, and um, and he uh, and making these really stunning and beautiful bowls. Um, and uh, uh, working on a kick wheel, but also had a motor that. Depending on what they were doing, you know, they would they uh, he would motorize it. Um, his father uh, was also there, and that's Opa Hubert, Hubert, and um, and he was a charming guy in his 90s, um, and he was the one who uh, who did a demo and was very inviting and told the story of this place, which was really pretty magical. Um, uh, they had the last uh, wood burning kiln there, um, and uh, uh, and he had started when he was age five, um, and um, uh, and he threw a pot as a demo. It was really quite astounding. Uh, it was thrown on a wooden wheel. There was a kick wheel uh, where the the head of the pottery of of the wheel was uh, warped uh, because it was out of wood and it was warped. And um, and it um, and he he just turned this most beautiful, perfect pot, kind of like this one. Um, and uh, that was the first time I ever saw a wheel throwing. And uh, he also um, threw then a, a, um, a lid for the pot. And the lid, by eyesight, fit perfectly. Um, so, you know, that's, that's quite skillful uh, to do. Um, and uh, one thing about that pottery that fascinated me and that was very meaningful for me was um, how uh, how many forms they used or or were still um, throwing mainly because uh, uh, their pottery was popular um, that that at some point had been used for for um, for things that I had no clue what it was actually, um, and one of these was this little what looked like a flower pot, and it was perforated and uh, um, on um, three feet, and um, it's actually a cheese maker pot. And basically, what farmers did is they would 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 have thickened milk that was at a consistency so that they could put it in the pot and the way it would, uh, uh, you know, we make it outside and, and create a cheese product. Um, so um, there were other things that uh, um, this, uh, 
this is sort of the style, first of all. They they found their own clay. It was very earthenware, um, wood-fired, um, um, a few colors uh, that that were uh, angobes that were poured over the pot. Um, but what was characteristic were uh, for these were these are storage jars, and um, and the you see that the middle pot um, did, uh, that they took out and and, and turned over, and it's a, it was a threaded lid, and um, and these are you know good size, and the threading was amazing to watch. Um, basically, they they made the pot, and uh, and then had this little funky wooden tool with three little waves and would hold the tool on the inside of the rim and then uh, and the and and the piece would be on on the wheel and then slowly turn the wheel and move move in spiral form this little tool upward um, then they would take the lid um, and put that also on the wheel and then and then basically do the reverse so that that it would would fit as a threading um incredibly skillful um uh but you know it worked and uh and needed to be done there was no other way to seal a pot really effectively um with a lid at least uh here's ludwig um actually with one of these pots you can see that they they have to thread it um uh, they have the threads, um, and uh, he is um, he's pouring uh, slip, which they called ango, uh, over the pot uh, to make it green. And um, uh, but what's remarkable is is that all of their pottery, uh, they only they they uh, they poured the the slip on the greenware, but they also um, uh, would glaze on the greenware, so it was never bisque, um, uh, and, um, and even with the big pots, they could do it, or big platters that would turn out totally flat. Um, here he is setting the kiln. The kiln was a long kiln, um, and uh, uh, the potters here, you'll see that it had quite a style of setting the pots. Um, they uh, um, they didn't use very many kiln shelves, uh, and they were often turned upside down or somehow stacked into each other. Um, and some of the rims were not really glazed, so that that um, that's not true for all of them, but for some, so that. Uh, or they had little stilts in between. Um, they didn't stick to each other. Um, I mean, these these pieces were glazed, um, and uh, um, and platters came out beautifully flat, not warped. I mean, it's also earthenware, so it wasn't fired super high. Um, and uh, and then the kiln uh, would be fired for 36 hours. Um, I also want to say wood kiln, it was the last wood kiln. Um, I don't know about wood firing currently in Germany. Um, it's not a res wood is not a resource that it, you can come by that, that easily. Uh, sometimes they would, they would buy some of the wood, but some of it also would be donated, you know, barns that would be torn down or neighbors. Um, so here he's looking into the kiln. Um, and uh, this is jumping forward a little bit, but um, once I lived in the U.S., which is a little, you know, a few years later, um, I I also would visit, and you know, we would uh, we would um, be very happy to to see each other or to catch up. I totally forgot to mention that the day after I had had entered this pottery for the first time, I, uh, I went out, 
I, I left the pottery saying, I want to be a potter. And, uh, and the next day I, I uh, came back and asked them whether they could teach me or just tell me how to become a potter. And they offered me to become an informal apprentice. And so for a long time after school and so on, you know, I would go and, and spend my time there and learned a lot. Um, so, uh, this is jumping for, forward, but actually right after high school, I, I went to West Berlin, um, and, uh, you know, you have to imagine West Berlin was, 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 um, in a very unusual place, uh, at the time in, in, in the mid seventies or early seventies, uh, surrounded by a wall. Um, uh, it hadn't rebuilt as fast as some of the, uh, the other West German cities, um, bullet holes in in the buildings, missing uh, lots, you know, missing buildings and lots. Um, and um, I uh, uh, and it, it was it was sort of a it, it was a tense environment, but um, there were also a lot of people who who were kind of creative types or who wanted to do their own thing. And that was perfect for me um, because I went and I, I uh, uh, rented an old tailor shop and, um, and opened up a studio. Um, and uh, uh, what I did was I, um, this is me, uh, I put the, the, I bought a kick wheel, I put it in, uh, so that it was into the studio, so that it was visible from from the uh, street. It was a nice neighborhood uh, that wasn't too trafficy, but uh, residential to a certain degree, and 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 people were walking by, and uh, and they would come in and talk, uh, or be interested in the pottery, or buy some pottery. Um, and uh, uh, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to feel connected to to uh, to people uh, while I was making pots. Um, uh, uh, what I uh, the type of work I did were were a lot of teapots. I was really into teapots, um, and of course a technical challenge uh, and uh, and and you know, sets that, this is, I guess, my black and white set, um, and, uh, and then always tea warmers, um, because to this day, Germans really like their tea warmers. Um, and, uh, let me see. Yeah, this is, this is my very funky setup um, for, for showing my work. Um, I also want to say that I actually uh, lived in that shop. Um, it was very small, uh, and, uh, and it had only cold water uh, uh, and, and a bathroom outside on, in the hallway. Um, so, you know, for me that was important uh, as, as you know to be able to do this. Uh, I think the other piece that that uh, also, um, you know, was sort of adventurous. Was that um, I? Uh, here's another uh, piece that I, the, you know, pieces I worked on. Um, was that I? I didn't have a kiln, uh, but had um, befriended um, a woman who had uh, was running a community uh, studio uh, in um, on the outskirts of West Berlin. And, uh, and she offered me to be her teaching assistant while I could also fire there. And, um, and, uh, and that was great. Um, but in order, I didn't have a car. So in order to get there, uh, I packed up my greenware in, uh, into a cardboard box and I took the bus. <laughs> and and, and I, had, I had to switch buses too because it was a little far. So... So, you know, at the time, that's what I did and, you know, what I needed to do. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, okay. So, um, just 
another part that I only remembered when I went through through these uh, um, photos was that uh, someone had asked me to do a name plaque, and uh, so I did some flat work, some tiles, uh, and uh, um, experimented a little bit with uh, uh, more imagery, um, which, you know, if you know my work, uh, you know, it appears later on, too. Um, so that actually just completed that first chapter. Um, and uh, the second chapter gets us to Eugene, Oregon, um, where uh, after a road trip, um, I ended up um, mainly because I encountered the Saturday market there, and uh, which was a, a, an arts and crafts market, um, and uh, and I loved it. And uh, and there were a lot of really exciting. Um, there was a lot of exciting work done there. I ended up um, uh, working out of the uh, uh, out of a community studio. Um, Kind of like here, it was called the Mott Current Art Center. They also had a soda kiln. They had all kinds of, you know, firing possibilities. Great people who were there, and uh, and I sold my work at that very Saturday market. Um, and um, uh, well, to continue on with unusual ways of being a potter, um, I uh, I actually had a cart that you're looking at and that I could pull from um, from my house down the road several blocks to the Saturday market. And the cart had my work in it. And then I got to the Saturday market and I I unfolded the the um, these these shelves and I put my pottery there. And uh, and you know that that's uh my ex-husband was a woodworker and he made it um it's pretty cool and i actually don't remember it was another potter who ended up you know with it later on when i left um so uh what i i some of the work that i did there was work with porcelain i had never done that um and I also, you know, worked a little bit with hand building, um, uh, made soap dishes like this. And it wasn't until Paula, who can't be here because she's in Philadelphia at the art show, um, until she looked at it and she said, well, you know, there are your petals and that you might know from, from my work. And I hadn't, I had looked at it and I didn't make that connection. I thought, oh yeah, right. <laughs> it's good when other people also, you know, you, you know, other set of eyes, uh, what they can see. So um, I uh, I did functional pottery and I thought that's what I would do, um, but then um, partnered up with someone who who uh, had a commission to do an entire to tile an entire kitchen. And um, it was lots and lots of tiles. And they were very simple tiles, but I learned a lot about working with the flat dimension of clay. Uh, and that got me to, to also experiment a bit with colored clays and, and combining different clays together and, uh, and working with slabs. And I started to do these cutouts um, uh, that you know, this is white stoneware. I cut out dark stoneware and actually some porcelain, and rolled it slowly into the tile, and uh, and then enjoyed whatever undulating lines um, these tiles could create. Um, and uh, uh, and um, this is another example uh, using actually the the colors all colored clay itself that I rolled into it and then enjoyed very much sort of how it turned out and, and was always very different. Um, it's another one, same thing. Uh, I 
I did look at this pattern and thought, oh yeah, triangles, that's also familiar and, and repeats itself as a design element. Uh, I like to, 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 to you know, use the hands as a sort of a gestural element, um, usually all figural for the most part. Um, this is one that I called Cafe Clutch and um, I wish it was in, in color actually because it was the these are all blues um, and and one thing that I like doing just as a technical challenge and because I had fun with it was to throw miniature porcelain sets and I then started to put them on the tiles and uh, they just seemed to really work very well with um, so this is me at the Saturday market and um, uh, uh, I really went crazy with these little miniature t teapots, I have to say, because they are everywhere. They turned up as knobs and, uh, and on top of this, these jars and, of course, on the tiles, as I already have shown you. I also have seen a lot of tiles that, you know, I have no photography of, so it was nice to, you know, okay, oh my God, I forgot all this. this they, and they were, you know, because I, I didn't think of myself as an artist. They really were sort of, you know, artsy objects, I guess, you know, um, wall decoration maybe. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, so. Were those little teapots done on the wheel? Yeah. Yeah, they were on the wheel. <laughs> no, no regular wheel, but thrown off the hump. Um, yeah, I mean, I looked at this uh, uh, yesterday and thought, oh, it's surprising I didn't, I should have made teapot, uh, you know, earrings or something too, but, but it was all tiles or, or other functional wear. Here's another piece. Um, I mean, the hands also uh, held a certain fascination for me because in order to support myself and not feel that I was that I had to create certain functional wear that would sell. Um, I, uh, I had started to, to train as a massage therapist and, and earned my money, you know, really that way. Uh, it's another set. Um, and this one. So, uh, you know, just played around. I had a lot of fun. Uh, and I think, personally, uh, looking back at this time, um, uh, I didn't have a filter. I think just now, you know, I just think that is so great. And I, I wish I could get back to that place. It's not that easy. Uh, but I had so many images in my head. And I just, they all came out. You know, I didn't, I didn't filter it that much. Um, uh, and... You know, it's a special time in one's life. It doesn't always happen. Uh, so now we're at the third chapter. As I mentioned, uh, after a long hiatus, uh, uh, I decided to return to clay. And uh, um, people had told me about the Harvard Studios in, in Cambridge. And... Um, and you know, I uh, and I, uh, I I did a lot of functional work. I really uh, enjoyed getting back to the wheel. Um, the way the timing is is uh, is organized at at the Harvard Studios is is that they they have for the for the last 35 or 40 years uh, at the end of each semester there is a show and sale, and it's just people from the studio only potters. Uh, who who uh, who are are um, you know who will show their work? I mean, whoever wants to, of course. But it can end up being 70 or more people. Um, so here you see some of uh, you know the work. I I stayed very true to the slip trailing that uh, you know as for for a decoration for the most part because that was something that I was comfortable with and and. You know, dates back to to uh, the the um, 
the Mayos Pardos. Um, and, uh, and those had been my wheel throwing days. And then um, I developed um, a, a very strong tingling in my hands that I actually still have and that led to a cervical fusion. And after that, I, I wasn't going to wheel throw. That just didn't work together. Um, so I completely turned to hand building, mainly using slabs, I mean, only using slabs. Um, and one of the projects was, uh, uh, which you see parts of here, is was um, making making cups for my our son's um, wedding. Uh, and the cups were uh, gifts for the for for the people who came. Uh, I made about a hundred, and uh, um, and it uh, and they're all soda fired. Uh, and each one of them, I I could decorate differently because they weren't supposed to be a set. And and I recommend doing that because you you know you don't get too attached to one piece. You just keep going and and have fun with it. Um, and uh, this is a piece where I did throw some parts of it, but then combined uh, you know, parts and uh, uh, looked for sort of more undulating uh, rims and, and forms. Uh, and then I took a class that, uh, um, that where uh, one looked at a piece of ancient pottery and uh, and the assignment actually was to 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 uh, to reproduce that or to make that that piece. Um, and this, what I got fascinated with was Jomon pottery, very ancient uh, Japanese pottery. Um, some of it dating uh, back 10,000 BCE. And um, at this point, an extinct an extinct uh, civil, civilization. Uh, and this was my riffing of a form like that. You know, I, I love these, these, these corners. It's all of that work. The, the work from then is sort of unlike other pottery that I had seen. Um, this is another vessel. Uh, if you look at that little pot on, on the left, um, I don't know that that was so little, um, but um, I like that form. I like the rim uh, specifically. And uh, so I recreated that. Um, and this is the part I made um, with that rim. Uh, this is uh, celadon glazed. Uh, this is what it looks like from the side. Um, and um, you know, it's uh, yeah. So that actually was very uh, productive to do to try to make something that uh, that you see and you know, kind of incorporate your own ideas or aesthetic into it. Um, and then these these rims uh, started to evolve, uh, uh, and I could add more and. Um, and, and with the part at the left, you know, I started to see sort of the organic uh, uh, and flower-like um, uh, um, forms. And uh, so that started a whole phase of creating um, vessels that, that had this sort of set of petals, tulip vases, uh, I called them sometimes. Um, and um, yeah, that's, uh, it's not that long ago. That was probably like three years ago, I think. Um, uh, also like to uh, experiment with funky forms. Um, uh, and then, you know, the three, the three legged, uh, think of the cheese maker pot, you know, with its three legs uh, and, uh, uh, and using colors and designs. Um, and these are actually not made at the same time, but you know that three-legged this um, kind of kind of makes me. Um, it's a uh, 
it's it's fun to work with, you know, because I, I never know where it sort of takes me. Um, and this is more recent where um, using color and design has become much more part of my work. Uh, in this this um, flower break or flower bottle, um, I used um, layered porcelain slips that that were colored and um, uh, and cutouts uh, uh, to create these shapes. Always like putting things on feet, just gives them character. Uh, this is another piece um, that I made uh, that you know, use of texture, color, um, colored clays that, uh, yeah, that, that inspire me. Another one, sort of similar. And um, so uh, on the right, uh, I continued with that same concept of of combining designs um, that that or shapes that I like to create um, in combination with textures and layered uh, colored clays um, or underglazes um, and uh, and a lot of uh, you know the a lot of the elements have that sort of oval shape that's a little egg-like because uh, I like it. Um, but then six weeks ago, we were in, in New York and, and went to the MoMA and, um, and went to the permanent collection. And I find myself standing in front of this Gustav Klimt and thinking, oh my God, there it is. And I had no idea, you know, it's not something that I, of course I knew it, but I, that wasn't what I, what I was, that, that I consciously at least, you know, had in mind. And maybe it's a pretty universal uh, um, shape as well. Um, but I then actually realized uh, I, well, not in, not, that's not a contradiction, but um, I had made this platter several years back and had used that very same shape. Um, and then uh, more recently, I continue on with that sort of more oval egg shape. Um, I uh, uh, molded, um, used a mold that I made to, to create these eggs. Um, that I smoke fired, um, and uh, and they and you know they also uh, resemble some of the rocks that we have been finding in in Maine, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a very pleasing uh, shape, and um, so now we are up to the very present. Um, and uh, and that's uh, uh, at the Chesterwood um, Metamorphosis show um, that uh, that that I had with Nina and and uh, and uh, Nina Ryan and Ann Farrell um, together and um, and that's where I could show some of. Um, my work, as you can see, the tulip vases, and there's also the uh, the that part from the Joman phase. Um, but I would what what I also did for that show was um, uh, I created a new body of work that uh, that would go on the wall, and that uh, that um, you know where I continued to work with. Uh, the the layered surfaces with the shapes of of you know the the egg like shapes um, and uh, and some imagery that you know is flower flower nature oriented um, and color uh, these are actually wall boxes so they were tiles that um, 
if you haven't seen them, that uh, that that have a little box behind that I've built into it so that you can hang it up and, and the tile isn't flat to the wall. Um, and uh, and this is this is this is a flat tile, not a not a wall box, um, and an nasturtium on it. Um, and these are two um, of the wall boxes uh, that um, are, yeah, you know, we're used more and more, you know, uh, some flower imagery uh, that's actually on a very low fire clay uh, that's that's pretty white and this is the last one um, that I'm going to show um, and that's uh, those were four tiles that that I combined and um, and created uh, an imagery together with uh, the layered surfaces, uh, but also slip trailing, uh, and you know multiple uh, mul multitude of uh, of approaches, um, and that was framed by my husband. It's, our, it's sherry wood from from our property, and I think came out pretty nicely. So, um, you know, I think that uh, this made me think of where do I want to go from here? Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I want to want to do more um, work that's that's uh, that's tile oriented or flat oriented and that becomes bigger and where you know I work a little bit more with with the uh, the layering of uh, of colored clays and imagery. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 all I'm going to say right now. Thank you. So, if you have any questions, we can. I'm just going to request if you actually more green rig, if please ask your questions loud, and if you wouldn't mind sort of repeating them for the audio for folks who are. Ah, okay. Around. Yeah. All right. Will you teach teapot class, please? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, diffi if you don't throw them on the wheel, they're really difficult. And I, uh, yeah, I, th I think teapots need to be thrown. Yeah. Uh, Ingrid, I have known you for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's only 35, but <laughs> anyway, yeah. it, this was so fabulous. And I think the persistence of your aesthetic mm -hmm. was really struck by that and what you respond to mm -hmm. and, um, how objects have evolved, but something about your creative life force is evident in all mm -hmm. of this. Um, and I wonder... You know, it, I'm fascinated by the soap dish, which immediately when I saw it, I thought of your... You saw it, yeah. But I'm I'm a little bit more dense when it comes to that. Yeah. I think we all are about what yeah. we do. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. you say a little bit about putting this show together and what it's... Which show? This show. This, this talk together and what it's, it's meant to you or... Did you see new things as you put it together? Um... Yeah, sort of saying more about uh, uh, how the this talk came together, uh, or the yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I mean, the motivator I think was for me to 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 talk about my my very beginnings because um, you know you forget that um, yeah you. Uh, that it, one usually doesn't talk about, uh, you know, where I started or what I did then or what I what I thought I would do and 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 uh, and and how that can be totally different from from what I'm doing now. Uh, but that there is an evolution. Um, so getting to know me in that way, I think, is 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 a big part of it. Yeah. 
Um, I have a very practical question about nothing like that. Um, the Japanese, the, the class that you took and you made those yeah. ancient Japanese. Yeah. Were those all slab or did you do coil pots at the bottom? Because they're so, they're more rounded than I usually mm. see slab as being. Yeah. Um, no, they are slabs. Um, but, you know, they are cut out in a way that that they would become conical or, you know, will fit together uh, and then paddled into shape. Um, but they do... Use a form like a mold or something? Mm -mm. No, not for those. No. It's okay. sand build. Yeah? Uh, Ingrid, I'm interested in because you had a time period where you didn't work. Yeah. And it's really interesting to me to see that the work evolved mm -hmm. um, significantly. And so I'm curious, I mean, I have a similar thing that even though you weren't making work physically or literally, did you find yourself thinking and your thinking evolving that then eventually showed up in the work and you did start to work? Mm -hmm. So, um, you're asking during that time, did did something in the time that was sort of dormant, maybe? You know how it cut to. Were you working in your head in your life, but not physically making the work during the time period? You yeah. When when I uh, before I so before I came back, yeah, that's what you want to know during that time. Uh, other than life experience and you know, uh, raising uh, things, children. raising children, uh, being a psychologist, um, yeah. But all of that, you know, becomes so. Well, first of all, it's it is all um, communication oriented and 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 very personal, of course. But it's also the the uh, the relief of being, you know, of working with clay um, is, you know, it's, it's, it taps into a part of you that, uh, and I think a lot of people feel that way about clay, that's just, just, you know, it feels like time disappears and, uh, and, and it's a deeper sense of myself that I connect with. Um, but I'm sure that I also, I think in that time developed uh, a different aesthetic because, um, you know, I did not even remember, I think, that I had, that I had made all these tiles. And when I started again, I would, went right to the wheel. Uh, and, and that's what I wanted to do. And it took me a little while until all of that sort of started to come back in different ways. But really, this getting into the slap work, uh, having to, um, I uh, I feel was a godsend. It just freed me up, and I slowed down, and I didn't put myself under pressure to to make. To make wheel thorn things um, or even functional work necessarily. It just was good that way. It was good. It was good for me. Yeah. I think you really paid your dues. <laughs> Taking the bus and pulling the car and oh God, man. Did you ever go back to Berlin and after the wall fell? Yeah, it's not, it was, yeah, I did. Um, I haven't been back for a while now, but uh, uh, when we went back, certainly went to that store and whatever it had turned into, um, saw that. Um, but um, that West Berlin disappeared. And, uh, and I'm still sad about that a bit because that just, you know, whatever came next was is so much. It's a big city. Um, it was an island. 
it was an island and you know you had to drive for five hours through East Germany to get to West Berlin uh, you had to get a visa you had to pass through the border um, it it uh, and then you know and then there was this island that you know wasn't totally ideal or anything but it had a character and a soul um, and it, I mean, I think Berlin probably still has that, but it's not the Berlin where I lived. Yeah. I don't think I've ever. I'm making so many connections I haven't made yeah. before. Yeah. You know, and the, so many of your pots are anthropomorphic, the, the three-legged mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and that wonderful form that. Looks like my grandmother and bloomers. Um, and, and I'm thinking about you being a massage therapist and the fertility yeah. of the yeah. and yeah, there's that. All, all of these things sort of lining up. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it, I know Ingrid from graduate school, so I also know you're just a super smart person and, and your intellectual capabilities, but it's interesting seeing this feelingful, tactile, massage, hands, mm-hmm. play, um, combined with this lengthy aesthetic that's mm-hmm. really involved and different things have come forward, but boy, there's really sort of a continuity. Yeah, I mean, there's a continuity and there's, a, there's an evolution, but there's also a loss yeah. of something that, you know, I mean, we all know it, you know, it, certain times in your life you you were thinking differently or you were approaching something in a more spontaneous way and and that doesn't come back not like that no. in a different way but but you're a wonderful teacher i personally am not a potter but i love these three legged pots richard said oh i'm developing this tablet class would you like to help me beta test it and it is so much fun so if you haven't it was in one day mm-hmm. you taught me how to make all of these these forms. I mean, well, I made a lot of them, so yeah. that was that was easy to do at that point. Yeah. <laughs> or they follow? Oh yeah. You 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 mean the the eggs? Yeah yeah. Oh yeah yeah. There, some of them rat, uh, rattle, yeah, yeah. They're, they're. I mean, they're, 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 you know, about this size or so, yeah. So they have to be hollow, right? Yeah. Otherwise, they, they probably not make it through the fire so well. Okay. Well. I, well. I think we could probably go on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to thank you, Ingrid, and I, it, it's clear to me that you have um, old old friends and new fans, <laughs> and um, it's just been really lovely. Um, to I got to see this this slide ahead of time, but I didn't know the story. Mm. Um, so I just want to I just want to thank everyone for coming and let you know um, Ingrid's email is there. She keep oh. and I sign up for our mailing list because she's going to keep offering classes mm-hmm. through the year and um, maybe exhibiting around so Mm -hmm. keep us posted and we will happily share the link with you